How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Patriot DIY channel. In this video, we're gonna be restoring this antique wooden trunk. All right guys, now this trunk originally belonged to my wife's grandmother and it's been in storage for who knows how long. This thing is very likely close to 100 years old, if not older than that. So today we're gonna try to restore some of its original beauty. Now I'm not gonna be painting it or doing too much heavy sanding or anything like that. I don't wanna alter the looks of it too much because I really do like that antique look, but we are gonna get it cleaned up. We're gonna restore some of the wood and the metal and repurpose it and give it new life here in our home. So if you get in here and you take a close look at it, you can see it's definitely coated in a lot of dirt and dust and cobwebs and things like that. It does appear to have its original leather handles, but it is very dry rotted. So we're gonna see what we can do about repairing that. And if you take a look here on the inside, it is lined with paper, but it's in pretty rough shape. A lot of it's starting to flake off. Some of it has a little bit of water damage. So we'll see what we can do about that. This trunk originally would have had a top tray here that is no longer in here. So I'll probably build a new top tray for this while we're at it. Now we have a lot of work to do to get this old trunk restored and I'm gonna show you every bit of it. But first guys, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell and give us a thumbs up. Now let's get to work. All right, now this thing has decades of dust and dirt and cobwebs all over it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get it good and clean. So I'm gonna go over the whole thing with the shop vac and the air compressor just to blow off any of that loose dirt and cobwebs. A brush helps with this process as well. Then I'm gonna give the whole thing a more thorough cleaning, just using a sponge and some soapy water. Once I feel like I've got it as clean as I can, I'm gonna go back and just blow it off with the air compressor to make sure I get off any water that's still on there. I don't wanna cause any more rust than there already is. Next, I'm gonna go around the whole trunk looking for any loose hardware or nails that might be backing out and just tap those back into place. Now, the hammer that I'm using for this was actually my wife's grandfather's, so this may not be the first time this hammer was used to repair this trunk. And I think that's pretty cool. Then I'm going to turn my attention to the inside of the trunk. Now, like a lot of other trunks from this era, they do have some papering on the inside surfaces, but unfortunately the paper on the inside of this one is in really rough shape. So my next step is to just get all of that off. The easiest way I've found to do that is just to wet it all down and soak it with water really good to loosen up the adhesive and then just go at it with a paint scraper to scrape it all off. This process actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Once it's wet, it comes off pretty easily. I'm just going to scrape away at this and try to get off all of that paper and adhesive. Then I'll vacuum up all the trash and put a fan on it to dry it out. Now a trunk like this would typically have a top tray in it that you could put some smaller items in and then you could remove that tray to get to everything else on the inside. And that's what these rails on the side are for. Now the tray that was with this trunk is long gone, so I'm gonna be building a new one. This is gonna be a pretty simple process. I'm just gonna take some measurements and then I'm gonna be using some one by three pine for the sides of my tray. And then I'm gonna plane those down to a half inch thick to match the construction of the rest of the trunk. I lay out all my pieces on the workbench and then I'll assemble those using wood glue and brad nails.
These corner clamps help to make sure everything stays nice and square during assembly. Then I'll rip down a piece of quarter inch plywood for the bottom of the tray. And again, I'm just gonna be attaching that to the bottom with wood glue and brad nails. This tray needs to be able to rest on those two rails on the inside of the trunk. So I'm gonna cut some one and a half inch strips that I'm gonna to apply to the top sides. And that's gonna give it a way to rest on those side rails of the trunk. And then last thing I'm gonna do just to make it a little easier to lift this out of the trunk is I'm gonna drill a finger hole in either side. That's gonna make it really easy just to reach in and pull the whole tray out. With the tray complete, let's go test fit it and it fits perfectly. So we're gonna take it back over to the workbench and finish it off with a coat of shellac. Now once I've got most of that paper off and I've got the inside cleaned up good, I'm gonna sand all these wooden surfaces to get them clean and get off any small pieces of paper that might remain. Once I've got the inside sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and give the whole thing a coat of shellac to protect it. I chose to use shellac here, but you could definitely use polyurethane or anything else you wanted to use. You'll notice I haven't taken the paper off the bottom, and that's because I'm actually just gonna resurface the bottom of this trunk. Now you could certainly repaper the inside of this trunk if you wanted to, but I like the exposed wood look. But for the bottom, I just ripped a piece of quarter inch plywood to fit the bottom. And to attach that, I'm just gonna be gluing it down in place. So I'll apply a liberal amount of glue here in the bottom of the trunk. Then I'll set my plywood in place and weight it down while it dries. Now back on the outside of the trunk, you could certainly sand and repaint this and all of that, but I like the antique look of this. So instead of repainting on the outside, I really just want to get it protected. The outer shell of this trunk is made up of mostly thin sheet metal and a few wooden bands. And I think all of that would really benefit from a thin coat of oil just to help preserve it, prevent that metal from rusting further and keep the wood surfaces protected as well. Well, there's a lot of different oils you could use for this. I'm using mostly mineral oil and I'm actually using WD-40 on some of these metal parts and any moving pieces. And our trunk is done and I think it's amazing what just cleaning and oiling the outside did to this. And of course the inside looks basically like a brand new trunk. So I'm hoping we get a lot more years of use out of this. All right, guys, that's it for restoring your antique trunk. Now, most of the work that we did was on the inside. We got rid of all that torn up paper. We sanded and refinished the wood on the inside. We resurfaced the bottom and built a new tray for the top part. But on the outside, I really wanted to preserve that antique look. So I didn't do a whole lot of sanding. We didn't paint. If you are looking for that brand new look, you could certainly sand down all the wood, repaint all the metal surfaces and things like that. But I wasn't interested in that. I still wanted to have this antique look. So mainly on the outside, what we did was get it good and clean. And then we preserved it by oiling everything down so that it won't continue to rust and degrade over time. This was a really fun project. I really enjoyed doing stuff like this, especially with family history and antique things and stuff like that. Now, if you guys have any questions or any other tips or tricks for better ways to do this, we'd love to hear it from you. And of course, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.